Hello, everyone. Welcome back to the St. Louis Arts Chamber of Commerce and our virtual holiday art expo. Uh, we hope that you have been checking out the booths and all of the programming, but we are back here because we have a beer tasting. So we are joined by Stephen Hale, the founding brewer of Schlafly. We are going to get to him in just a second. Hopefully you have your beers lined up by color. Um, but first, we wanted to show you a quick tour virtually. So, if my Zoom will let me, we are going to show you a quick video. Hey everybody, Stephen Hale here from Schlafly Beer. Very excited you have joined us today. I am standing in front of the SRM color wall here at the historic Schlafly Taproom in downtown St. Louis. And as a quick explanation of what a color wall is, the colors of beer can range from very pale, light in color, like our Kolsch, through our pale ale and other amber colored beers, all the way up to the big stouts like oatmeal and imperial stout. So that's what the color of beer is. It's not the only way to taste beer. There are lots of different ways. I'll talk about many things during our tasting today. Uh, very excited to go through that with you and taste a handful of beers and ciders. So, uh, just thought I'd give you the little preamble on the SRM wall. Standard reference method, the color of beer. Welcome everybody. Hey everybody, welcome to the brew house of the Schlafly Taproom in downtown St. Louis. This is where the magic happens and it has for 29 years now. Just have to explain a few things here so you know about the brewing process. This is the mash rate, mash paddle. We designed it from the Master Brewers logo, and we actually use it to mash, stir the mash in the mash tun here. Basically, picture a huge bowl of hot cereal that we have to keep stirred up. The door is closed, sealed with a gasket, hot water, uh, crushed grain all mixed together in here, and that's where the early magic happens of converting the starch to sugar. Once we get that, the brewers want to spray hot water on top and collect the sugar water into the brew kettle. This is where part two of the magic happens. To bring this to a boil, we add hops at the beginning and middle for bitterness. We add hops at the end for aroma. It boils for about an hour. Takes probably more than that for most brews to collect into the kettle. So a brew day to start with raw materials and get it into the fermenter is about five to eight hours, depending on the system. It can be quicker for a larger brewery with more efficiencies built in. But we're working at the 15 barrel level, which gives us about 434 gallons of beer, about. Uh, from this big boil, you can't pitch yeast into that. Not most yeast, pretty much not any yeast. So we have to cool it down through this thing that looks like a radiator called the heat exchanger. This cools it down with cold water going that way, the hot work, which is what this stuff is called before it becomes beer, going the other direction. Through this apparatus here, we inject the yeast we've collected from a different tank, we saturate it with oxygen, and on it goes to the brewing cellar. So follow me to the brewing cellar over here. This is where the third part of the magic happens, fermentation. So brewers, or in many of your cases, brewsters, the women who make beer, we don't make beer, we make work. We work in a sugar shack and the yeast takes the beer. It ferments, it's chilled work. In any one of these fermenters it takes about a week or two, depending on the beer. It can age much longer than that until the beer is ready. And you're probably wondering, for those who haven't seen these before, why are they shaped like a cylindro conical tank? It's so that when ferment fermentation is done, we set some controllers, we chill the tank with some glycol wrapped around here, the yeast crashes out to the bottom, the party is over, time to congregate and keep warm and get ready to brew another batch of beer. When we're ready to move it then, we collect it, uh, collect that yeast, use it, dump the rest, and then collect the, connect the hoses here and send it down into the tanks where it then comes up to the bar or goes into the package, uh, keg, bottle, and can to be served to you. Speaking of which, I think I'm working up a bit of a thirst. So what do you say we color my beer and go enjoy it through together? Thanks, everybody. All right, and through the magic of technology, we're back at the bar. Um, Steven, how are you? 
I'm doing well today, Jessica. How are you? I'm doing well, but um, I like your for your cat your former self. I'm I'm kind of thirsty, so um, I've been working all day. So I think it's time uh to try to color by beer. Now I tried to follow your instructions. I know you're gonna chat walk us through. Um, mine kind of ended up on more of the darker spectrum, so I don't have as much of a fun like color situation. Um, but I know you do. I know you chose some of your favorite Schlafly brews. So, uh, but before we get into that, can you give like the quick overview of how you became founding brewer of Schlafly? And, uh, cause I don't know if I know that story. Well, it started when uh, I came out to St. Louis from Maine in 1991 to help open the tap room. I was the assistant brewer to Dave Miller. Uh, I left in the summer to help open a brewery back in Maine. And before I got back here, Dave Miller actually took a job in Nashville, Tennessee. So I was invited to be the head brewer in the fall of 94. So about eight years later, helped open the Bottle Works, moved back to the tap room after about a year and a half, ran that for a while. I've been working with the sales and marketing teams for the past seven or eight years. Uh, now I do a lot of things like this. Uh, I think if people don't have much time to hear my job description, it's basically drinking beer and talking to people. And that's the sort of fun description. There's a lot more involved there used to be a lot more travel involved, but you know, 2020. So I do as many of these things as possible. I visit accounts. I do uh, some copy editing and computer work and descriptions and interviews and things like that. So in terms of history of the brewery, I swear I'm telling you what I remember accurately about the early days here, but it does go back 29 years. We'll celebrate our 29th anniversary on December 26th. So that's how I ended up here. I don't use the term brewmaster for me because I'm not involved in day-to-day -day production and operations. I leave that to the amazing crew downstairs here at the tap room and over at the bottle works. So that's so cool. Well, thank you for for clarifying like the difference. I feel like it's kind of like in the restaurants, chef, you know, is a certain like it means something. So to know brewmaster means something. That's that's really fun. I, I think chef is related to the word chief, or if not, it kind of has to be because it's only one letter off. It I like seems that. like it should be the chief in charge. So yeah. Awesome. Well, very cool. Well, let's let's get to tasting beer. So we know that artists love working with color, and that is where a lot of people start. So that's why we had this idea to taste by beer. So or taste color, taste beer by color. I haven't even started drinking yet. Yes, so, ease up, relax, open a oh couple no. beers. You've been working all day. <laughs> uh, I've got the steering wheel now. So tell me. Can, yes, can take it away. If, if a question comes in or something, and okay. Uh, happy to answer that as we go along. I got five beers for the tasting. Uh, uh, up front, just to let you know, they don't uh, go in a strict line from yellow through amber up to dark, but they kind of do a little bit. And I had to fudge it a little bit on one of them because I thought we had a, uh, a cider here that would give a different color. Um, for a long time now, I've been a big fan of describing beer beer color as uh, with few exceptions, yellow, brown, and black, and gradations within that. They're far more, is Pantone, I think your audience understands the word Pantone. Yeah. Uh, that Pantone, the PMS, Pantone Matching System, has a huge number of colors. Beer can have that, but for the most part, it's clear or cloudy, uh, variations of very light in color. Years ago, there was a beer that began with a Z, that was actually clear. Uh, I believe it ran through car car charcoal filtration to get the color out, but uh, I don't have one of these to sample. That would be an interesting start. That would be tabula rasa, the blank slate, sort of a not entirely artist term, but uh, all this talking is making me thirsty as well. So I think I'll go and open the first beer. And as we get through it, describe the different beers. Uh, one sort of housekeeping notes up front, if people are, if they got beers to try and sample and they have a couple of people to join them, that's great. If you only want to open one or two, you can do that too, or you can hold, I'm guessing most of it is brown bottle. You won't be able to see the color or you already know what the color is. But I'm going to start by grabbing Schlafly Kolsch. Let's see, other people would say, make sure to show it, Stephen. We got a Kolsch. And these can be any beers out there. I do not expect everyone's going to have only Schlafly beer. That was not part of the ticket price here. So this is also a great opportunity to demonstrate how 
Again, this is all my take on it. There are different ways to do it, but I gave up pouring beer down the side, which I actually do a little differently. I do it at an oblique angle, but I really don't even do that. I would prefer to do that. Pour it down into the middle, swirl, smell, taste. The greatest aroma you're gonna get is right at the beginning. When you pour the beer, swirl it. I usually don't remember to remind people about this till later, so I'm happy I've thought of it now. As Soon as you get the beer into the glass, Swirl, smell, taste. And beer is, for the most part, with nearly infinite exceptions, water, malt, hops, and yeast. There are lots of different ways to do that to come up with even more different beers. So you want to smell what the brewer, or in Jessica's case, the brewster, has put into the beer production. What malts did they use? Uh, what hops did they use to add aroma and bouquet of hops? Because if you brew a beer without hops, it will be basically out of balance. Um, I've always felt that hops are uh, the creator's gift to humans to make beer because hops aren't used in a whole lot of other things, maybe like a, a hop pillow or something for sleeping. Um, so you want to smell that. You want to taste both the malt, the sweetness, and the hops. The yeast can contribute flavor. All four primary ingredients can contribute flavor. And when you get into wood aging and adding other things like bourbon barrels, you get two influences there, the wood of the charred barrel and the bourbon itself. So the complexities can go almost off the charts. But for something a little more simple like a Schlafly Kolsch, it is all about a pretty straightforward recipe with a distinct yeast strain that makes this crisp, clean, dry, refreshing. Very easy drinking beer. Kolsch is the beer of Cologne, Germany. So there's our yellow beer. And in talking about the color of beer, if I were to hold up a, I think this is the time to do this. If I were to hold up a glass of coffee stout, you can all guess what that looks like. And this glass, or more, the, the way I heard this from Pete Slosberg from Pete's Wicked Ales many years ago, he held up a glass of Budweiser and a glass of Guinness Stout and said, which one has more alcohol? And it was sort of a leading question because the answer is Budweiser at about 5% and Guinness Stout at about 4.2%, meaning the color of the beer has nothing to do with the alcohol content. I like to take that to a bigger extreme. And if I had a glass of Belgian triple at 10%, it will look pretty much like this, possibly a little hazier, possibly a little darker. It depends on the brewer. It could go either way. But don't be deceived. That yellow beer at 10% has a lot more alcohol than a Guinness stout or other dry stouts or session stouts that may have under 4% alcohol. So the color of beer comes from the grain. In the video of me in the brew house, that first tank I was showing you where we put all the grains in, if you use this many grains, and they're all light colored, you're going to get a light colored beer that doesn't have a lot of alcohol. And if you use that many all light grains, like the light grain that's in the silo, it's like white flour for a baker, the bulk of the uh, recipe for baking, if you use that many, that's when you're going to get a Belgian triple. And if you use gradations in between, that for the most part controls the alcohol content. If you use various amounts of crystal or caramel or chocolate or roasted barley, or dark chocolate or black patent, long list. Lots of different darker grains. That will make the beer look like the last one we're gonna try here. So uh, I also need you to remind me that yeah. uh, I'm still on beer one. So, okay, thank you. Yeah. Molto grazie. I'm gonna yeah. keep on moving with that. So, uh, yeah. so take I, away, the takeaway there is that I should not look at a beer's color to determine the alcohol content. You gotta look yeah. at other, you can't. You can't. Yeah. What you can do is look at a massive display of beer in an average store and say that the average alcohol of all those beers is 5%. Because for the most part, we all grew up with beers four and a half to five and a half percent. You would know when it was a 6% beer, let alone something higher than that, seven, eight, nine, 12%. Or, oh my goodness, there are breweries that make double digit, multiple double digit beers. Oh, wow. I don't think that's 
not your St. Louis lawnmower beer by any stretch. So you want to watch out for those. Um, and then you can make that very dark colored beer because the more of the darker malts that you use, the less you're able to, you can't get alcohol out of those. They've been, the, the darkest ones in particular, it's been roasted out. So if you yeah. fill your mash time with those dark grains, uh, let's not talk about that. I think you're brewing coffee at that point. You're right. You're very dark extract, but not 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 anything you can ferment. All right. What's the next one? So actually, I'm going to talk about this without 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 opening it because I think a lot of people are familiar with Hefeweizen. It is a German beer style in its origin. Hefe means yeast. Weizen means wheat. It is a cloudy colored beer. So rather than sacrifice the beer, I can take it home and save it for later or something you would have a cloudy yellow version. So on mm -hmm. your color palette, that would be like adding something so your color's not bright. It's more like looking through the lens of, uh, is it Monet or Manet? I never remember which one. Uh, had, I, I think he must've had glaucoma or something because everything's really blurry. Mm -hmm. Do I have the right, or, I think I have one of the right artists there. You yeah. gotta me up on this somehow. Uh, if someone knows, put it in the chat. <laughs> somebody knows. Uh, I've seen some pretty hilarious descriptions of some general pieces of art from the artist with a rapid fire description of who the artist must be. Uh, like homeless people lurking around uh, dim street lights and stuff. You know who that is? We all know. Of course, I'm not remembering the artist right now. My wife's going to kill me because I've known that. Oh, for I feel like I should. And I'll think about it in a second. We're all near computers. Can someone go Google? Uh, yeah. Famous, I think he's Dutch. Dutch artist, homeless people, dim street lights, whatever. It's like it's like looking at something uh, through a, a different lens. Now yeah. we're moving on to hmm. maybe the lighting's not the best for this, but yeah. if there is an iconic uh, craft beer from the St. Louis area, pretty much it's Slappy Pale Ale. Mm. Our answer to an English pale ale, amber in color, easy drinking, medium body, uh, medium hoppiness. This is not an IPA or an ESP. It's not big hoppy. And there I go again. I give you instructions of how to taste the beer like this. And no party fouls here. No party fouls, everybody. Uh, during judging competitions of beer, a lot of judges will do this. They'll, they'll smell the beer but they'll also capture the aroma so they can go back to it. Hmm. And again, this is not a big, huge, hoppy beer. I actually do not have a big, huge, hoppy beer because the color by beer, to me, didn't strike strike me as, let's do an aromatic beer tasting with hmm. super uh, delicious, uh, very pungent aromatic beer. This one's easier, easier drinking. The colors come from the caramel malts so most of the beer, if this were filled with kind of like those tubes of sand with the different levels of colors and things, those are always fun. Um, this would be primarily the base malt. And by base malt, I mean our pale, like our white flour the baker would use. The pale malt, it's what you see. If, if a brewery has a silo, usually it's the base malt because they use more of that than anything. And then they'll use some caramel malt, some dark chocolate, some black malt, some other malts to make the beer they're making. Mm. It only begins right there. Is the water treated for a beer style? What yeast strain are they using? What hops? How many? When are they added? It's pretty uh, infinitesimal. Not infinitesimal. It, there's an infinite variety of choices how to do that. So, copper color beer, amber, a little more uh, flavor on the tongue uh, from the uh, Amber malts and the uh, hoppiness is a little bit higher on this one as well. So the next one I think that uh, we'll have some fun with. And uh, my apologies, I thought uh, I thought we actually had some raspberry cider in the house. I didn't look into every nook and cranny, but the uh, since we didn't and since we don't, I chose to taste. Boomerang, which is a mead seltzer. What's a mead? A beverage made from honey, diluted honey. Uh, everyone knows what seltzer is. We call ours a mead spritzer. 
what's so lovely about this is that it's only 90 calories. This is not a sales pitch, but you can say it anyway, right? 4% alcohol, three grams of carbs, zero sugar. It's all on the label here. So, and four, and 4% 4 alcohol. So if you like the world of seltzers, give the boomerang a try. Okay. What, was Jim, a new Carrey, what was Jim Carrey's character's name in the, in that movie? I've uh, selling product. <laughs> is this, so this is a new product. This is fairly new. The, uh, the black raspberry is new. We have had boomerang lemon lime for a while now. And so we're back to yellow, but okay. this is a color thing. So it's all to be about color. Yeah, I'm definitely like, we're dark, man. Yep, that's fine. Don't go dark yet. I'm Hunt not gonna go dark yet. Hang I'm, in there. It's I'm still on my nervous. sour. I'm it's always making me nervous. Hold it, you have a sour? I have a sour from Boulder. Oh, nice. Yeah, the uh, the peach peach berry pie sour. Yum. Very good. It's delicious. I wanted to get a different color in here, and this mm. would be similar to our raspberry cider that comes out in the summer. So we're all out of it, and there are lots of different beers out there with a lot of color. Some of them, many craft breweries, brew it so it's actually very cloudy too. They, they use a lot of floating fruit in it, but. Uh, mm. To get color in the beer, if you're not using malts to do it, then you can get some luscious reddish tones from a Vienna malt or mm -hmm. other malts. And different, uh, maltsters, malting companies use different names for their malts. So you can't quite get the red red without adding something else into it. You can get close, but uh, a lot of ciders that are fruited or beers that are fruited, uh, like our raspberry cider, it's not quite pink, but it's definitely going towards it more so than a, a cloudy yellow beer. So mm. Mm. black raspberry, boomerang, delicious, really, uh, and I know this isn't about the tasting, but we can't do this without talking about how things taste too. So it's like going to Italy and tasting the food and not talking about it. You gotta talk about it. That's all you'll talk about actually. Absolutely. So, uh, so there's the red for reddish in color, uh, which then brings us to the one I held up earlier, ah. which, uh, and I'm and I'm not trying to race through this. If we have time, we can do that Good. cloudy, cloudy beer. So I know brewers, people have been in the industry for a long time, who will heat up the glass and pour the glass from one to another to get the bubbles out of it because you really want aroma in the beer. Hmm. There we go. How's this color color palette? I love that. Oh my goodness. Plus the aroma on this, for those on the call who have not had this coffee stout or any coffee stout, if you like coffee, that's not true. I recant those last words. Coffee drinkers would probably like this beer, but I never could figure out why a former brewer of ours, not a coffee drinker. I don't know how you get through the morning without it, but he didn't drink coffee. Lots of people like that. He went through three small five gallon kegs of this on his home kegerator every winter. Didn't drink any coffee, loved the coffee stout. I never quite figured that out other than he's a beer drinker. And this is an amazing, Beer, coffee, stout, the whole category is really fun and luscious and a, a treat to try. I mean, so I've got a different one. I've got Bell's uh, Double Cream Sweet Stout, which, I mean, I've never met a stout that I don't like. So, but you're making me very jealous because I have had that coffee beer, a coffee stout from Schlafly, and it's amazing. It's pretty, uh, it's pretty tasty and it's also easy to make. We had the... Uh, the coffee toddy uh, shortly before we package the beer. It's post, it's not in the mash, it's not in the kettle. Don't, hey, you guys don't tell anyone. This is proprietary <laughs> trades. Don't tell my people here, I'm telling you. And then we add the uh, the finished toddy, which is an extract, a funny oh. name for, when you make hot coffee, you make a, a, a pot of coffee in the morning, hot coffee, you're making an extract, it's a toddy. But we do it with cold water and let it steep for a couple of days 
and then pull the grains out and add that to the beer. So, okay. so then... I want everyone to make good coffee beer and I don't think any other way does it quite as well. Maybe similar, not quite as well. I'm not saying they're bad. I'm saying the way we chose to make it is, uh, is this method of cold toddy extraction. Mm -hmm. so, uh, so that's, those are the colors I have. I didn't even talk about Roy G. Biv. Is, uh, now that, someday, maybe in June during the month of Pride, we come up with a red, orange, yellow, green, blue, indigo, and violet beer. But there will be a lot of ciders and fruit beers in there. I love it. Well, the other, so that was like my brown, I guess, kind of. I also ended up with UCBC, like we were trying to go black, right? So we went like black lager. And then, like I said, all of them kind of ended up dark because apparently it's the season for dark things, right? Well, look at you're wearing there. I mean, you're not wearing a white, whatever, sweater or something, shirt. And no, uh, no, no, whatever they put in this black lager. No, mm -mm. Mm -mm. The, uh, the style, the black lager style, I know as Schwartz beer, which, yeah. means, which means black beer in German. Yeah. And it's basically a a lager because they're yeah. germans are famous for their lagers with darker malts but not to make it so roasty like an a stout mm. and the stout traditionally in ale has a lot of roasted barley in it so you're going to have some darker uh, elements to it darker characteristics but not necessarily big roasty it's gonna be a black lager huh well thank so, you for that. i've we went to a store and picked up some individual samples and just said here let's try these sure. um, because I always love trying trying new things, but it's also uh, helpful to kind of have a sense of maybe not by color, but at least kind of the things that you know you're going to like. But then things like this where you can go try try other things. Um, so the other one that I have over here is a nitro something. Do you is guys it nitro? Uh, We have done nitro. We're currently not doing it. We used to do it every year uh, for the release of our uh Nitro stout, our dry stout. Right. Uh, the original plan was to have oatmeal stout available six months of the year, and then a dry stout, and I, it was just called Irish stout, and that was available the other six months of the year. We ended up tweaking it so oatmeal was year round. We added the Irish stout, dry stout, and for many years we nitrogenated it, which means infusing the beer with nitrogen so that you, when you pour it through that. A uh, very special restrictor faucet. Guinness has perfected it. It probably invented it. I don't know. Um, but that restrictor faucet will then fill your glass with that rush of bubbles. So the beer looks like foam. And then it's slowly the dark black beer keeps coming up as the bubbles are released out of the out of the glass. So you end up with that thick, creamy head. That's pretty much all nitrogen. The beer has CO2 in it but very low levels. And that is the ultimate session beer, in my opinion. And yes, you heard it here, Guinness is a light beer. That one, not the export stout or the one meant for the Caribbean that's 8%. I'm not talking about that one. I'm talking about the Guinness you get most of the time in most stores and uh, bars around here anyway. It is either side of, I think it's just over 4%. A little bit of CO2, a lot of nitrogen, the most iconic looking beer possibly ever. I love it. But it's a light beer. Take a sip. Close your eyes and take a sip. If yeah. somebody removes the head, you think you're drinking a light beer. It's very thin bodied. It's low in CO2. It's low in alcohol. You can drink it all night long. Other than the great Japanese practice of feasting with our eyes. When you look at something, you enjoy food. It has to be pretty. You can't just slap it all together. That's what Thanksgiving leftovers are for. Everything mixed up, a little bite of this and that is great together, but not for the real presentation. And that uh, Guinness Stout is a beer you can drink pretty much all night. The Lads of the Village, a famous poster of five guys, most of them in their early 90s, some in their late 80s, all drinking tankards of their, uh, of their favorite. I don't know if it's all Guinness, but definitely all... Uh, all good beers, all Irish beers. That's crazy. We're learning all kinds of things. So how do you go about coming up? I mean, you're not actively involved like with the day-to-day -day operations, but how do you, how does the brewer, uh, brewmaster go through 
and decide, okay, I want to try this. I got this idea. Like, where do they get their inspiration for new flavors? Uh, from the world around us, from other breweries, from listening to people and what they uh, say they want to try for beers. And then we put it in through the, uh, through the 20 gallon pilot system. A lot of the beers we have uh, featured at the Stout and Oyster Festival, sadly, didn't happen this year. But for many years, we uh, had a variety of stouts that the brewers came up with and they brainstorming sessions with the brewers. A couple of these probably helps the inspiration too. So uh, and not just in beer recipes, but lots of things. Mm -hmm. and, uh, and they just bat it around. What hasn't been brewed yet? I remember, yeah. I remember in 1995, sitting in this room with Tom Schlafly and Sarah Kohler, as she used to be called before she uh, gave me this thing. And we sat and looked at the whole calendar for the year because we only had about 12 beers we were brewing then. And we filled out the calendar, said, let's fill these gaps. We have cap space, we have 12 taps. They, were du they used to be duplicated, one through six, one through six. We've now expanded them many years ago to one through 12. So as we expanded them, we could introduce more beers seasonally. And a lot of them came as suggestions from customers, from our travels, from listening to what uh, other brewers did. Uh, this is back before the public had the internet. Mm. Uh, this was through magazines, through travel and things like good old fashioned things and tele telephones. You didn't need the uh, pay phone. We actually had phones in the office. Uh, so lots of, lots of things. Just keep your ears open, keep your eyes open. It's, yeah. it's kind of related to how do artists figure out their, what they're going to do? What's their inspiration? How do they come up with that stuff? No. It's amazing. So that's kind of funny. We've been talking to lots. We had an artist, like a jewelry maker. We had a um, a Latin dance company um, teaches people how to salsa, and like we learned about the origins of salsa. And just that's literally the same answer. It's like, where do you get your inspiration? It's the world around us. Like the Latin dance teacher was talking about. She's like, yeah, I'll be out on the street and I'll see a little guy, little kid doing like a, a whatever step. And she's like, oh yeah, that's really cool for this thing and it's kind of interesting to see how everybody it's a similar answer but in totally different media I, I would actually add to that jessica it's the world around us and paying attention but also and i'm not just making this up and trying to give the right answer but the muse within the inspiration breathing in life and like what what's missing what maybe the the brewers go to the bar and there isn't one on here they want. They've always wanted to try something else. So bring that to the, uh, dig up a recipe for that and just playing around. It's yeah. fascinating to watch. That's so cool. I mean, that's why we wanted to make sure we were hitting every element of art and expression because it is so similar and, but it's different in so many ways. So it's kind of fun to kind of compare everybody um, and ask them to say questions all day, which is kind of fun. Yeah, brewing uh, has been referred to having and requiring art and science. And I've always leaned towards the art part because I'm not a keen scientist. The microbiology is critical. You can be a great artistic brewer, but if you're not doing things in a clean fashion, or if you don't have a good lab, uh, people are gonna go elsewhere. So a clean brewer will sell beer forever. But somebody who's a great brewer and they're not clean, this is, delves into the, into the cleaning and sanitizing a little bit, but you have to know how you're, how you're brewing, what you're brewing, and, uh, and also keep it clean. So inspiration. That's amazing. I love it. Um, I feel like I got some beers to go drink. I got to go catch up. There's, there's quite, I have quite a collection over here, which is fine. Sharing is, sharing is good too, Jessica. So uh, if there's well, I think, there. yeah, I think my husband will help me drink some of these, which is nice. Uh, middle of the day beer pause is I think a lovely way to spend a Saturday afternoon. Right. Uh, well, before we go, I was just waiting to see if we had any questions, but before we go where, um, I know you've got Schlafly has obviously three different locations and beers wherever, but like here, What's your pitch? What do we, how can we support you as a small business, especially on small business Saturday? 
on Small Business Saturday, if you're able to go to the pubs and if you're comfortable with dining in, the protocols in place with the staff wearing masks and sanitizing tables and everything, I feel very safe in our three locations and lots of other restaurants are doing that as well. Uh, if takeout is more your thing, uh, we don't deliver per se, but there may be delivery services. I'm not quite sure, but definitely uh, curbside pickup. They will bring it out to, I've seen it here at the tap room and the bottle works. I'm pretty sure Bankside and St. Charles does that as well. Uh, we feel fortunate because we also package a lot of beer. So people going to the various uh, grocery stores and C stores, they can get a pretty wide variety of Schlafly beer there. So support your locals, support as much as you can. I mean, you can be a hermit and stay at home the whole time and have everything delivered, but you gotta eat and you don't have to drink beer. You don't have to drink alcohol, but you gotta eat food. So you're gonna have to support things and the more you can keep it local, in my opinion, the better off we all are. And that's not to say the far flung something from around the planet is the only one to make it. I'm not saying don't support them, but if you can get it locally, getting it locally is great. So especially small business, didn't it used to be called Plaid Saturday? I remember that term from something, but small yeah. business, small business, I think it's called Beer Saturday, which beer is followed day. by Beer Sunday. Yeah. And there are five more days like that. So uh, go. <laughs> I love it. That's my excuse when I want to go order out. I am supporting a small business and I don't have to cook. So that's definitely the way we want to uh, go about it. We are so happy to have you be a part of our, our expo this weekend. We love it. To those that tuned in live, thank you so much. Hopefully you enjoyed your beer. And if you're watching this on the repeat, go buy... Um, Schlafly or otherwise, but go by Schlafly and walk us walk through it again. Make sure to tag us with all of your tasting pictures. And uh, Stephen, thank you so much for uh, tasting uh, the color of beer with me. I appreciate this, it. This was fabulous. And I'm really glad we started with that SRM wall, the, yeah. the color of beer, because that was a great way to get used to it. It's basically one through 40 or 80, depending on which one you use. And that's why I like that yellow, brown, and black with a lot of variations cloudy, uh, hazy, if you will. Uh, and also you'll get a lot of different colors with those other fruits and other things you can add to beer. So it's pretty wide open. Um, to all you artists out there, keep up the great work. It's a fabulous thing. Thank you so much. All right. We will see everyone the next time. Look forward Later. to it. Thanks, you guys. Cheers. Salute.